Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is going to be a video regarding how I would recommend setting up your uh, sensitivity on your computer to have the ability to choose um, the precise sensitivity that you want to use in every game and keep that consistent between different games. Um, so as far as I categorize things, there are basically four different sensitivities that you have to account for. The first one is the DPI of your mouse. Um, basically faster DPI means that for smaller physical movement of your mouse, your cursor will go farther on your screen. Um, there is a common misconception that a higher DPI means the mouse is actually like more accurate. Uh, it's, it's not. Um, there are some effects of using a higher DPI that can make it seem like the mouse is more accurate. But just understand that arbitrarily choosing a higher DPI does not inherently make the mouse any more accurate. Uh, and this comes back to a lot of the reason that you will see by far the most common DPI settings for um, for people who are serious about you know being as good at using a mouse and keyboard as they can be, they pretty much all of them run either 400 DPI, 800 DPI, or 1600 DPI. Now there's no real reason that they're attached to those particular numbers other than those are preset values which come on a lot of different mice, and so it's an easy number to use um, as a reference point. So if I get used to running 1600 DPI and then eventually I want to change my mice, I can buy a new mouse and be extremely confident that I can choose 1600 DPI with that mouse and keep using the same setting, right? So if you don't want to have to worry about messing around in software or limitations of different mice in terms of choosing specific DPI numbers, the easiest thing to do is stick to one of the very common preset values. Um, and 400, 800, and 1600 are certainly the most commonly used uh, options. The other thing is that using arbitrarily large DPI uh, can actually have negative effects on the performance of your mouse. So if you have a mouse like this, it's capable of like, I think it's 30,000 DPI or something at a maximum value. Um, but what you'll find is that above a certain level of DPI, uh, they have to do one of two things. Either you'll start getting um, jitter in the sensor, which essentially, yeah, makes it jitter slightly and can affect your accuracy um, and just generally is not a pleasant feeling to have. Uh, or what they have to do to prevent sensor jitter is introduce smoothing frames, um, which essentially cause additional input lag. Uh, and it's so they can average out the readings of the sensor over a larger period of time and avoid this jittery behavior um, associated with the DPI being too high. Um, and so as a consequence, uh, a safe guideline for all current top of the line sensor models. So anything like a 3389 or a 3370, a 3335 or a, the new 3395 sensor. Uh, as long as you stay below 1900 DPI, which is I think where smoothing is introduced on the 3389, you should be totally fine in terms of you won't either get smoothing or jitter. Um, and that's why 1600 is kind of the, the top end of the popular DPI options, because you can double that and go to 3200, and that's a common option on many mice, but depending on the sensor, you run into smoothing or jitter, so eh, not as helpful. Um, so generally speaking, that's why I would recommend that you set your mouse to 1600 DPI. Um, now, there can be some issues where if you're used to running a very, very low sensitivity, uh, it can turn out that you can have some, some limitations in your ability to select the exact sensitivity you want. Um, at very low sensitivities if you run 1600 DPI. So if that's the case, it's totally fine to turn it down to like 800 DPI. Um, but as a general rule of thumb, I'd recommend taking whatever DPI you run currently, if you run 400 or 800, and then uh, double it for now. And I'll show you how that works out with uh, what's on your screen in a minute. So outside of DPI, the next layer is your window sensitivity. Now most 
uh, video games these days will ignore your Windows sensitivity settings for your mouse speed um, and just look at the raw input values. Um, the, the, the reason you care about this primarily is for those games that don't ignore the Windows sensitivity settings. You want to make sure that you haven't messed these up completely and thus um, affected your in-game performance. So in general, for mouse pointer speed here, uh, leave this at 10 out of 20, and then go down here to additional mouse options, go to pointer options, and make sure this box, enhanced pointer precision, is unchecked. Uh, that it introduces mouse acceleration, which generally speaking is considered not great uh, for, for, especially for use in, in shooter games, but um, some people do like it and play well with it, and that's totally fine. Um, but there's a better way to do mouse acceleration than using the one that's built into Windows. Similarly speaking, this is a, a sensitivity multiplier, um, is what this bar does. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to increase or decrease the sensitivity of your mouse. It's just that there's a better way to do that. So leave this guy in the center at 10 and make sure that the Windows mouse acceleration, the enhanced pointer precision is uh, unchecked and then we're done with our Windows settings. So the next thing you want to do is download this program called Raw Excel. Um, you can find that from this GitHub page and they have a whole guide on how to download and install it. So it shouldn't be too hard to follow through with. Um, the main thing we care about is this sensitivity multiplier here, um, but there is also options here for mouse acceleration, which give you a lot more control over the different parameters of the acceleration than the Windows mouse acceleration does. And that's why I said, even if you want to use mouse Excel, don't use the one that's built into Windows, use raw Excel's uh, options for it instead. Um, but for the rest of us that don't use mouse Excel, or for those of you who do, the other thing that you care about is this sensitivity multiplier. So the reason I advised that you double your DPI from where you're used to having it is so that we can set this sensitivity multiplier to 0.5. So by default, this is one, which means it's not increasing or decreasing the speed of your mouse. But for me, um, this is way too fast. Uh, 1600 DPI for browsing my desktop like this is way faster than what I'm comfortable with. Uh, I would want it to be at least 800 DPI, if not lower. So what I've done is by setting this to 0.5, I've cut my speed in half and this is now much closer to a value that I would be comfortable with for desktop browsing. So essentially, set your sensitivity multiplier here uh, to give you a speed for desktop browsing that you're happy with. Um, but what you want to do is make sure that this number is under 1.0. So uh, probably to be safe, I would say make it 0.9 or less. Uh, and if it's still too slow for you, then increase your DPI further. Uh, don't um, raise this up over one. The reason I'm saying that is it comes back to what happens if you try to artificially inflate sensitivity using a multiplier. Um, the only way it has of doing that is a process called interpolation, which basically means we're going to pretend that the sensitivity is higher than it is. So if I set this to like two, for example, what it does is every time the computer registers one movement input, so let's say it wants, like it, it gets from the mouse, hey, move to the right one, like that, right? Then instead what it does is says, oh, I'm just going to move to the right two instead. And so it just moves twice as far all the time. And that's what happens when you use a sensitivity multiplier of two. Well, that doesn't really help because if I do that, what you'll see is actually that the minimum size distance I can move my mouse cursor is a lot larger, and especially for diagonal or circular movements, it ends up looking very jerky and awkward, right? Um, but if you set it to one or less, it doesn't do that. So you can make the same sort of movement and it's still jerky a little bit, but it's a lot less bad than what it was before. Now, what happens if you set it to 0.5? Does it make the the, the minimum movement size half as big? Does it actually add accuracy to the mouse? No, it doesn't. That's why I said arbitrarily large DPI values did not, did not actually make the mouse more accurate. What this does is it starts ignoring a certain percentage of the inputs. So at 0.5, the way that it cuts your sensitivity in half 
is that it waits until the, the mouse sends it two movement inputs, and then it moves it one on the screen. So it ignores half of them, right? And if you had set this to like two thirds, it would ignore one out of every three, or if you set it to one third, it would ignore two out of every three, so on and so forth. Um, so that's how this works. And that's why I, I said in general, you want to have this set up so that it can always be less than or equal to one because then you don't introduce any pixel skipping uh you don't lose any accuracy whereas if you make this number higher than that you do actually lose some accuracy okay so uh in general then what you want to do is pick a sensitivity multiplier value that you feel comfortable with for browsing your desktop and once you've done that, then we're all done setting up our, our Windows desktop -y browsing sensitivity, whether or not you use acceleration. Um, that's what you want to have by the end of all this. So then we're going to be, okay, we're done with raw Excel. Now we've got to figure out our in-game sensitivity. And this is where um, having raw Excel installed on your computer can be a major benefit over um, just relying on DPI to adjust your sensitivity. And I'm going to give you an example. So this program is called AimLab. Um, let me actually change the capture type back to game capture instead of desktop capture. Hopefully it will actually load my user interface for Streamlabs. Um, the reason that I'm doing this is because game capture is significantly less demanding in terms of resources, so my game will run smoother. Um, but I'm done with them. Okay. That's weird. It's not showing any audio input levels. Yeah, whatever. Okay. So. Or is I? Oh yeah, uh, aim lab. So this this is just a program that's designed to help you practice your aim. Uh, there's nothing special about this compared to other games um, in that sense. And it's just got different activities you can do. It lets you practice shooting different targets, different size, different placement, move in different ways, this type of thing. Um, so it's fun. It's helpful as a, as a training tool. But what I'm concerned about is not that, but this menu under controls um, and the reason that I like this is it lets me imitate the sensitivity selectors of various different games so if I use their default numbers uh, they're telling me that you know I got a field of view setting and a 360 degree distance which is which is how far I have to move my mouse on the mouse pad for my character to do one full spin on the game um, that's what that's what that is. Uh, and if you want to see that number, it's it's you get it by selecting advanced under sensitivity options there. Um, anyway, so the what am I trying to say? The reason that I brought this up. Um, there are some games which have very very good sensitivity selecting systems. So Apex Legends I've found to be one of those games. Um, for example, in Apex you can say, ooh, I want to run 1.51 sensitivity. And it's fine with that. It will remember that value. Sometimes it will round it to 1.5, but it will remember your actual sensitivity setting and stick with it. And it allows you, as a result, quite small, fine adjustments, right? Um, and so in this way, you can use the in-game sensitivity slider in Apex to pick exactly the sensitivity that you want, and that's that's really nice. Uh, Valorant is another game that has a very good sensitivity slider selector system where you can input specific decimal values um, with a high degree of precision, and it will remember them correctly. Um, and of course, um, Apex Legends is made on the Source Engine, so anything else that uses the Source Engine uh, that includes Counter-Strike, that includes Left 4 Dead, that includes Team Fortress, etc. Those games are all good as well. But there are some games 
that are not as good. So specifically, I've had one person ask me about getting a sensitivity that they wanted in Destiny 2. And the problem with Destiny 2 is despite what the slider in Aim Lab shows you, in Destiny 2, you can only select your sensitivity in increments of one. So the lowest sensitivity you can have is one, and the next step up from that is two, and then three, four, etc. The problem with this is that these steps are extremely large, especially when you're discussing the lower numbers. Because the difference between sensitivity 1 and sensitivity 2, 2 is literally twice as fast as sensitivity 1. Um, the default value is 10, by the way. Um, so if you have like 800 DPI, uh, like so we have because we're running at 1600 DPI on this mouse and then we've multiplied it by 0.5, so we have effectively 800 DPI. It's saying that your 360 degree distance is like 17 centimeters, which is stupidly fast um, for most people. Most people are, I mean, even the, the people that like high sensitivities run somewhere in like the mid 20s um, to, to around 30 centimeters per 360. And most people are, are somewhere more like 35 to 40 to 45 centimeters per 360, even in kind of faster paced shooter games. Um, Counter-Strike, you'll see people running like 60 or higher, but anyway. So this sensitivity is way too high. Well, okay, well, we can cut that in half and get a pretty reasonable sensitivity, so that's not a huge problem. But what if you find 5 to be slightly too fast? Well, your next step down is 4, which jumps you from 35 centimeters per 360 all the way up to 43. Now, that's a massive jump. And maybe the sensitivity you actually want is somewhere in the middle. But Destiny 2 won't let you pick that. So what are you going to do? You're going to go down to 400 DPI? That way you, you can multiply all these numbers by 2. This sensitivity would become 8 at 400 DPI. Where's my DPI number? Okay. All right. So we go down to 400 DPI. Then this would become 8 to have the same sensitivity as what was 4 before, right? Or you can go up to 10, which was what was 5 before. And now you have another option. You can pick 9 and it's halfway in between. Great. But what if 9 isn't exactly what you want? What if you wanted 8.5 or 9.5? or somewhere in between those numbers, right? It's a very rough adjustment system, and so it doesn't play that nice. But this is where raw Excel is really convenient because let me go back to running 800 DPI, and then I'm gonna say, well, what I actually wanted was not sensitivity five, I wanted the sensitivity 4.67. You can't do this in game, in Destiny 2, but you can make this happen using raw Excel. So for example, uh, if we go load up a sensitivity converter and we pull up Destiny 2 and we say my sensitivity is 5 and I'm running 800 DPI and I have this value. Well, what sensitivity do I actually want? I, want, I think I want 4.67. Okay, this gives us a, a centimeters per 360 value, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start reducing this sense, this DPI number, and I'm going to keep going until it converts my sensitivity all the way up to 5.0, or extremely close to it. There you go. So if I had, instead of 800 DPI, if I had 747 DPI on my mouse, and I ran an in-game sensitivity of 5, I could get the sensitivity I want, the same sensitivity I would have had if I could pick a sensitivity of 4.67 in-game while using 800 DPI. So how do we make this work? Well, just open up a calculator and go back to raw Excel. So we had 0.5 sensitivity multiplier to start with, but what we want to do is we want to reduce our DPI from 800 to 747. So 747 over 800 is 93.375%. So if we multiply that by our 0.5 sensitivity multiplier that we have in, in raw Excel right now, okay? This is gonna give us a value of 0.466875, which I'm going to round to 0.467. So I'm going to change my sensitivity multiplier to 0.467. And then when I've done this, yes, okay, it will slow down my cursor on my desktop a little bit. But now I can open up Destiny 2 
And I effectively what I have is this DPI value 400 and or 747, and so I can run an in-game sensitivity of 5 and get the speed that I want. So raw Excel lets you compensate for games that have terrible, inaccurate sensitivity sliders, and lets you pick exactly the sensitivity that you want by messing with small changes to your sensitivity multiplier. Does that make sense? Um, and the other thing that you can use this for is you can use this to compensate for the differences between two different mice. So for example, I like using the Fantech Aria, but I also like using the Vaxi Outset AX. But I've gone through and I've used um, this website, let's see, uh, here to test the slight changes in sensor between these two mice. So what happens is actually if I plug in both of these mice and set them both to 1600 DPI and then move them around, the Fantech Aria feels a little bit faster. And this is because the Aria sensor measures slightly more dots per inch uh, at 1600. Like, so I set it to 1600, but in reality, it measures slightly more than that. I think it measures like 1680 or somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, whereas the outsets measures a tiny bit less. So you set it to like 1600 and it measures like, what is it? Um, uh, geez, it's like uh, 1570, I think. Anyway, it's a relatively small difference, but if you take like 1680 over 1570, you figure out that the Aria is, you know, some percent faster overall than the outset is. Uh, I, I remember, I don't remember again the specific numbers, but I remember that the ratio between them, the Aria was 8.2% faster. Um, and the reason that I cared about that was what I did was I took the sensitivity setting, which felt appropriate for the Aria, and then I reduced it, no, sorry, I increased it by 8.2%, and then applied that result every time I used the outset. And so what I've done is I'm using raw Excel to compensate for the small difference in speed between these two sensors when they're set to the same DPI value. So that's another way to use raw Excel is you can have specifically a sensitivity multiplier that lets you choose the sensitivity you want in a particular game. Um, and you can find one that works for a variety of different games, gives you an acceptable sensitivity for all of them. The other thing that you can do is have a conversion factor for each different mouse that you like to use on a regular basis. So when you switch between them, you can apply a slightly different sensitivity multiplier based on the individual mouse so that your sensitivities will be entirely consistent even though you're switching between different mice. So what I remember, for example, is um, for my own testing, I found that I prefer a sensitivity multiplier of 0.46 with the Fantech Aria. Uh, so that's what I run with this mouse. And then when I took that and multiplied it by oops, wrong menu, uh, 0.46 times 1.082, it gave me this value, which rounds to 0 0.50. So when I run the outset, I just go back to the 0.5 that I told you guys to multiply it before at as well. Um, and there you are, that's the whole setup. So the last kind of um, with raw Excel, that's the entirety of like how you use raw Excel, why you care about it, why it's better than using the alternative options. The last thing uh, to consider is just how do you find in in-game sensitivity that you like the feel of. So, um, for example, I've been playing a lot of Apex Legends uh, recently, and this game has been kind of challenging to get adapted to. And it's because the way that Apex Legends works, it demands that you have a relatively high sensitivity for tracking fast moving people at close range and for doing certain kinds of movement, but it also uh, has a fairly high requirement for precision in order for you to be effective with certain weapons at longer ranges when you're trying to poke people out 
or um, you know make your way into a ring and there are people holding a compound and you have to kind of try and siege them and get some damage so that you can then push them and try to wipe the, the, the team out. Um, you need to have a good amount of long range precision as well. And then of course, you know, the, 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 the massive emphasis that game has on, on tracking moving targets and leading them properly to account for bullet travel. So overall, it's definitely one of the most demanding games that I've played in terms of the variety of different aiming skills that it, that it forces you to display. Uh, a game like Counter-Strike is extremely independent but in a way where there's a fairly small number of skills that you just do over and over and over again and have a low margin of error. But Apex requires you to do a wider variety of things and to do all of them fairly proficiently. So I always struggled when I was getting started with Apex because it felt like every sensitivity that I chose was either too high or too low. There were always trade-offs I wasn't happy with with my sensitivity. Um, and I tried a bunch of different options and I was never quite sure what the best one was. And then I was able to identify a process I could go through to try and match my sensitivity to my personal sort of habits. Um, and that actually worked really well and gave me a sensitivity that I'm very happy with. So what I'm going to do is walk you guys through, um, what I did and, and, and why. And AimLab is extremely helpful for this process. If you don't have it, it's free on Steam. Uh, I would highly recommend that you get it. So the main thing is under, so you go to training, you scroll down under skills, you go to precision, and there's this activity called burst flick precision. Um, and this is going to display uh, that my aim is pretty underwhelming and not that incredible. So feel free to laugh at me in the comments. But essentially what it does is it will spawn an orb in a random location, kind of around here. And your job is to flick to it and click on it as quickly as you can. And the more of these targets in a row that you hit successfully before they disappear, uh, the smaller they will get because it's the precision variant of the burst flick activity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this activity and then we're going to watch the replay in AimLab of me doing this activity and, I'm exp and I'll explain to you guys what it is I'm looking for. Um, but I'm just going to shut up and do the entire one minute activity uh, now. This activity does a very good job of making you look bad, even if you aren't performing that badly. Um, anyway, what you want to do is before you leave this screen, because it's difficult to find this later, I'm not even sure if you can, you want to go here to the view replay option. And the built-in replay uh, system in AimLab is very helpful. Um, so first things first, select this option here to display the leading path. And then you also want to slow down the playback speed. Um, I use either 0.25 or 0.1, depending on how much I have to process for every time I see myself shoot something. I'm going to stick to 0.25 for now, uh, in the hopes of keeping the video moving along at a healthy pace so you guys don't get too bored. So essentially what I'm going to do is I, I grab a piece of paper and a pen, uh, and I'm going to write down whether every single shot that I make in this activity if I went too far, if I didn't go far enough, or if it was on target. So 
uh, the terms that I use are overshoot, undershoot, and then I just call it good if I hit the thing. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to tally up um, the performance. So you can see here from this one, the leading trail uh, here shows that I go all the way to like the very back of the target. Uh, and so this is what I would call an overshoot. Like I, I pretty much go all the way past the target and then I end up having to correct back onto it um, like that. So that definitely gets marked as an overshoot. That is not perfectly centered, but it is close to the middle of the target, so I'm going to call that one good. Uh, and then this looks like another overshoot. Yeah, I'm going to call that an overshoot, even though it's just barely inside the target, because these targets are going to shrink the more that I hit. And so like this size one, it would have been a complete whiff one. Um, that's, I'm going to call that one good. Same there, good, so two more good. And then barely good. The other thing here, uh, I wanted to be specific about this. So you see how I'm not in the center of the target, but I'm off to the side from where I started. Like if I draw a line to the middle of this target, where I end up is over here on the left, right? For the purposes of watching this replay, don't care how far you are off to the left or the right of the target relative to where you started. Um, that's an aiming issue, like a muscle thing uh, that you can train to get better at in terms of moving your mouse in the right direction. The only thing that your mouse sensitivity is going to affect is how far your mouse goes. So the only thing that I care about is if I draw an imaginary line from where I start to the middle of the target, I only care about did I go too far or not far enough. I don't care about if I'm off to the side or not. So anyway. I'm going to call this one good, because even though it was off to the left, the distance was correct to the center of the target. And that's barely good. Good. Uh, that looks like an overshoot. I didn't quite see it accurately, but we're calling that an overshoot. And so on. Um, good. Good. Again, barely. Overshoot. Good. 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 Overshoot, overshoot, overshoot. Yeah, somewhere between good and overshoot. Good, good. Uh, again, I'm off to the right, but the distance is good. Good, good. Uh, overshoot, good. I'll call that good because the target is fairly small already. Um, again, good, because it was off to the right. That's an overshoot. I don't remember how many goods we've had. It's been a fair amount. Um, okay. Let's see. Am I calling that an undershoot, or am I barely calling that good? I think I'm barely calling that good. Good, 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 good. Kind of awkward, but barely good. Again, off to the side, but a reasonable distance. That's an overshoot. Okay. 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 Overshoot. Okay. Definitely an overshoot. Okay. 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 Overshoot. Alright. And so, anyway, I'm not gonna watch the entire thing. There's like two-thirds of it left. Um, you guys get the idea. When you're done, tally up the overshoots and the undershoots and compare them to each other. If you have significantly more overshoots than undershoots, it might be a good idea to try lowering your sensitivity. Whereas conversely, if you have significantly more undershoots than overshoots, it might be a good idea to try raising your sensitivity. Now, there is a caveat to that specific case of chronically undershooting targets. And what it comes down to is um, so sort of a level of belief and confidence in the sensitivity that you're using. So for example, uh, if I... What's the terminology I want to use? So just as a, as a case in point, let me set my sensitivity to be quite high for my my for me. So I'm going to raise it by like 33% and then restart this activity. And I'm going to do my best to be accurate to these targets and not overshoot them.
Okay. So first things first, uh, my accuracy or my total score was lower than the last round I did. So you can see uh, I lost like a thousand points or something. And again, I was, but like same accuracy, at percent accuracy, and only a very, very slightly longer time to kill, right? So overall, on paper, these two sensitivities don't look like they perform that differently. But if we if we watch the replay back, I want to point something out to you guys. So first things first, watch the color of the um, the trail here. So when it's red, that means I'm moving the mouse slowly. When it's yellow, that means I'm moving at a kind of medium speed. And green means I'm moving the mouse quickly. Let me actually slow it down so I can watch this better. And if you look, like, yeah, I'm not really overshooting these targets, but, like, see what I did there? I What I was trying to do was make a very deliberate effort to not overshoot the target, because I knew that I had set the sensitivity to be high, and I was trying to, like, compensate for that with my play. So this does a good job of illustrating, like, our body's ability to adjust for changing factors, but it has side effects and drawbacks. So the first thing that you notice is the color of this line in the middle, where I would be moving the fastest during this flick, still orange, not even yellow, much less green. So the maximum speed I get the mouse up to, not that high, kind of indicates that I'm not very confident. The other thing that you see is I pause like before I get to the center of the mouse. You say, well, that's an undershoot, right? Yes, but why was it caused? In this case, it was caused because I was paranoid about overshooting the target, and I wasn't willing to relax my arm and just make the flick that I thought would be the right flick to make for a target at that distance. Because I knew that my tendency was going to be to overshoot the target massively as a consequence of how much I had increased the sensitivity. So I pull myself to a stop early and then kind of walk it into the middle of the target. You see that? Similar thing here, slow down and then walk it in. And the maximum speed I'm getting up to, still you're never really seeing it turn green, right? Like it's getting, oh yeah, there we've got some green. But for the most part, unless it's these really long distance flicks, like I'm just not getting the mouse going that quickly and I'm having this tendency to slow down, right? While I'm still off the target and kind of slowly inch it into the center before I click. And this is, this is another way that you can identify, potentially it would actually be helpful despite the fact that it looks like I'm undershooting to lower your sensitivity more and work on relaxing do like unironically do the, the burst flick precision activity more as a way of practicing try to get yourself in the habit and feel uh what it's like to make that flick at the correct distance and then come back and try this again and do your best to relax and make the kind of motion with your arm do the flick that feels natural to you because what we're trying to do here is not identify what sensitivity will let you get the highest score out of a sample size of five tries or something. What we're trying to do is identify your natural tendencies and then match your sensitivity to that. So what I'm, again, what I'm seeing here with this, like where I'm slowing down off target and then kind of locking it in, I don't want to see that in my own gameplay because I know that that means that my flicks are, are going to take a long time, right? I'm going to flick near the target, and then I'm going to have to stop, check, am I on target? No, okay, make a correction, then click. And you don't really want to get in the habit of doing that as your default way of playing the game, right? Um, the other part is that if you're having some trouble uh, with this activity, specifically getting like results you're happy with like the target's always disappearing before you can get to it and it's annoying to you and it's it doesn't feel like good practice uh there are a couple other options that you have to practice similar situations the most forgiving one is this activity under flicking called line trace and this gives you a fair amount of time before it disappears 
So the goal of this activity is to practice moving along the line instead of wobbling outside of it as you go, because most people actually struggle quite a bit with moving directly to the target that they're aiming for. And you can see that in my replays, right? And so this gives you a longer period of time to set that up. Now what I want you to use that for is not, oh, I'm going to move my mouse slowly and consistently inside the line and then click, right? That's not helpful for what we're trying to see from you to determine your sensitivity. It's click, look at it, figure out where the target is on your screen, and then try to flick all the way to it in one motion. So you saw there, like, I massively underflicked, right? Again, I underflicked. Slight overflick. Slight overflick. Slight overflick. Well, massive overflick. That was on target. That was on target. Slight underflick. That was off to the side, but the distance was correct. Underflick. Underflick. But basically, the, the gist of it is make one motion, stop, identify where your cursor ended up, then correct for it, right? Don't try to fix your flick along the way, because what we want to see is what your natural tendency is. So in this one, if I go watch the replay, this will give us some helpful insight as to whether or not I might want to consider adjusting my sensitivities. Like, now I know I don't want to because I've tried every other sensitivity that's remotely near this one and none of them feel as good for me as this. This is just a matter of me needing to practice more. But this gives you an illustration of what you're looking for, at least. There's just a lot of delay because of it. So yeah, so you see this like massive undershoot and then I fix it, right? So that, that one is very clearly an undershoot. That's not caused by lack of confidence. That's caused by, like, me just not moving my arm far enough, even though I was trying to get all the way there in one motion. So again, right? Didn't get there in time. So if I, if I count these out, so far we've got two undershoots. That's an overshoot. That's a slight overshoot, but it's still an overshoot because these targets are consistently sized. I'm going to speed this up to half speed. That's an overshoot. Okay, that's an overshoot. That's a massive overshoot. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Okay, that's an undershoot. That's good, because it's off to the side and it's the right distance. Good. Um, that one did go slightly up off target and then correct back, so I will call that an overshoot, even though it was very almost good. That's an overshoot. Undershoot. Call that one fairly good. Good. I think, wait, let me go back. I didn't actually see that one happen. Um, yeah, that was good. Okay. Good. Oh, fairly good. Good. Overshoot. Overshoot. Good. Undershoot. Overshoot. Good. Good. Um, that, if that one was directly on the center of the target, it barely would have been good. It was off to the side, so I'm gonna call that one good. 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 Overshoot, massively. <laughs> and this is where I was like trying to slow down and explain to you guys, so when I watch it at half speed, it's pretty snail's pace.
Alright, so that's an undershoe. That's good, good. Oh, I ran out of time. Okay, so in summary, I had 10 overshoots and 7 undershoots. So not too far off, not a huge difference between the two. Um, and that indicates that my sensitivity is probably about right. And I know that it's, again, about as close as I'm going to get. So um, so that's the kind of result that you'd hope for. Ideally, it would be a little bit closer. Um, for example, I might try lowering my sensitivity ever so slightly. Um, so what that would look like in this case is I would leave my in-game sense alone because I have a reason for choosing the sense that I use in-game in Apex. And I would reduce this from 0.5 to 0.49 or uh, 0.495 like this, just to make a tiny correction to it and see how much that affects my aim. So I'll replay this just for fun. See if my flicks are more on target. And then to go through, watch the replay again, see if the balance between over and under shoot shifts at all, um, that type of thing. Obviously, like if you want this to be super, super accurate, you need larger sample sizes. You'd want to repeat this activity with each different sensitivity a couple, you know, five times or something, just to try and account for any um, personal variance in like your own performance between single runs of the task. Um, but essentially, Again, this isn't supposed to be something that you use, uh, this process specifically that I'm describing right now, this isn't something that I would use to um, to make huge changes to your sensitivity. Like, yes, you can try like one and then two and then 1.5 and whatever you want to do that way. And that's, that's fine, you know, if you want to try and go for it. But um, generally speaking, I would advise go in game, try a bunch of different sensitivities, make bigger changes in game, see how it feels, see how it plays out. And then once you think you have an idea of a smaller range of sensitivities that you want to stick to, try to find the sensitivity in that smaller range that's the best fit for your natural tendencies. Uh, that's what I did with this and it worked out really well overall. So anyway, um, hopefully that helps you guys to get an idea of how to fine tune your, your sensitivities um, to match it as closely as possible to your own tendencies in terms of aim. Uh, so final notes about this stuff, if you're gonna, it, when you're doing this, um, avoid this behavior of trying to like click the target as you flick past it. I used to flick like this. Uh, I was okay at it, but um, it comes with a big drawback in the sense that when you, miss you're obviously you've way overshot your target typically um and it's just much more consistent overall to give yourself a sensitivity where your consistent result when you try to flick to something is that you end up on top of it or at least very close to it rather than flicking wildly past it and again i'm not claiming that my accuracy is particularly incredible um, but I will say specifically, it's much better now than it was before, and I, I over and undershoot my targets a lot less on flicks than I used to, um, and so it's, it's definitely makes a noticeable improvement. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, oh, what a, the last thing I should do, um, 
So if you find line trace to be either slightly too slow paced, like it doesn't give you quite enough pressure, because part of the problem with, um, with line trace is that because you have so much time to get from the starting point to your target, people can tend to slow down out of the desire to be more accurate. And this starts to move your cursor so slowly that you can kind of watch it slide in and just stop and click at the appropriate time. And this works well for getting a high score in the line trace activity, but it doesn't really tell you anything about your natural tendencies to over or undershoot on your flicks. So your line trace should not look like this. If it looks like this, you're doing it wrong. Um, your mouse cursor movement is way too smooth and its maximum speed is not high enough to be genuinely representative of what your flicking tendencies are. So anyway, yeah, don't do that. Uh, if you find yourself struggling to push yourself in terms of speed uh, with that activity, but on the other hand, burst flick precision is too quick for you, and so you're like, well, can I, is there somewhere that's kind of between those two? Reflex shot precision will uh, will give you some ability to kind of be in between those two. It's like burst flick precision, except it doesn't spawn that orb back in the middle, and you have a little bit longer to get to the targets and click on them. And again, what you saw from my gameplay at the start of that run was bad, because I was moving, again, too smoothly and too slowly. So leave your cursor in the middle, identify the target, and then try to flick to it all in one motion. And then let your cursor stop and click at the end of your cursor travel. Like, even if the target disappears, that's okay, because you can see in the replay where you ended up relative to the target and you can infer from that, even if you can't see it in real time. Okay, so for reference, uh, if we watch the replay back, because we have leading trail on, you can always see where it ends up before the target goes away. So see how like with uh, that previous one down there? Yeah, like that. Even if they're disappearing before the cursor gets there, you can see where it was going to end up. So you can judge the over or underness based off that. Anyway, so yeah, um, hopefully that helps. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, the other thing to do that I would say is very crucial is once you think you decided on the sensitivity, try a couple of other activities, like things that encourage uh, different priorities or different types of aiming to see how this new sensitivity suits those activities as well because everything is a bit of a trade-off uh, so for example in apex like a big focus is flicking to a target and then sort of continuing to track it so this activity switch track is a good example of that you don't need to like set high scores or anything um, just pay attention to when you try to flick to the target and then track it, like, again, are you overshooting, are you undershooting, how consistently are you able to track the target once you finish flicking to it, like, do you flick to it and then does your cursor keep wobbling around and falling off of it, um, or do you flick to it and then track it smoothly and consistently every time, you know, this type of thing. And you can see I'm having a little bit of trouble uh, consistently and smoothly tracking the targets at the end of the flex right now. So there might, again, there might be an argument to say 
given that I was over flicking more than under flicking before and then I'm still feeling a bit shaky uh, with my tracking after the flicks, I might want to try turning my sensitivity a little bit further down, you know, maybe go from 495 down to 49, et cetera, et cetera. But anyway, yeah, that about does it, guys. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that helps. Um, it's There's certainly no like magic answer to finding the perfect sensitivity for you, but I will say that from experience, um, the, the kind of intuitive rightness that I felt when I finally identified a sensitivity that I really was happy with, um, it was worth it. It was genuinely worth it. I, 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 that, that was like the first time where I would load up a game, not perform very well, and then instead of having that gut reaction of, oh, maybe I should change my settings or maybe I should get a different mouse. It's like, okay, I had a bad game. That's all right. I have stuff that I can practice or work on. But I didn't, I, I knew that changing my sensitivity wasn't going to like magically fix my problems. There wasn't just like something out there that I was going to uncover behind a rock one day that was going to fix my aim, you know? Uh, and so it just let me move past that that level of trying to use equipment as an excuse for bad gameplay and that opens up a door to some real improvement that you might otherwise continue to struggle with so like like i said i think it's worth it um and it's just more fun if it feels like your aim matches like intuitively to what goes on on your screen um so it's a fun feeling so all right if you guys have any questions uh let me know um hopefully this all makes sense to you um but i totally understand if my descriptions were inadequate in, in some manner or another um yeah I'll, I'll be reading the comments so you know let me know what you thought of the video and uh any other ideas you have for stuff i might be able to to talk over um to try and give people better resources for for figuring all this stuff out anyway thanks for watching all the way to the end guys if you made it all the way here you're a legend um, and i will catch you in the next video